Yes! 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 Will Loaf make it out of the closet before the end of the 30 second Smackdown recap? The office gangbang is in charge and all the three hole punches rejoice. I didn't feel a thing. Christian hits a frog splash on Hunico for the win. The Usos do a perfect impression of O'Neal and Young. Millions of dollars defeat a couple of dollars. Ryback has an impressive squash match. Ricardo Rodriguez has the best segment of the night but loses to Santino. Sheamus admits he likes to look at Ace Arse. Jack Swagger has his first good singles match since the birth of Abe Vigoda but Sheamus beats him. Sandow does an astonishing cartwheel. Big Show blames me for everything. And Del Rio pins Kane for the number one contendership for the World Heavyweight Championship and no way out. Now, if anybody hasn't done a Scott Stamp version of Big Show's theme song, I want you to do it so bad. The show opens up with Big Show whining. Whining? Yes, whining, like his dog got ran over by a tricycle that he was riding. Was the fact that he got very upset about the Funkasaurus troll train. I know I wasn't too happy with this when I was too busy trying to tweet this picture and put it on my Facebook. The Raw Loaf on Facebook! Like! But Del Rio comes out and saves Raw! But he doesn't save Raw because Rodriguez doesn't really introduce him, man! Del Rio's facing Santino tonight. They announced that Santino has made it on the list of the top 25 Masters of the Mic. And about 25 seconds later, the US Champion is tapping to the World Heavyweight Championship's number one contender. We cut to backstage and Jesse Sorensen's buttering up OGB. And every single WWE vlogger shuts me off. Big Show comes in and sends him back to the hospital. Next up is a Tag Team Championship match featuring Featuring Kofi and R-Truth versus Team 4G, Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger. Now this was a pretty fun match, but I will tell you one thing. I am really getting sick and tired of seeing Team 4G slash Swagger slash Ziggler lose. Seriously, if you lose that often, how do you keep getting matches? I understand it's all set up, but I'm just looking for that little piece of realism out there. It's just, if somebody wins, they should be moving on. And if somebody loses, they should be moving back. <sighs> but right when I was thinking that Ziggler was like, I'm too good for this. And my heart went from, I think I got a lot of cholesterol in my heart. So we cut to the back and these segments have pretty much turned into the Big Show, the Big Bowley. That Brodus Clay comes in and challenges Big Show and Big Show accepts. And we might see Brodus's first loss. We just might. And I'm just gonna kind of talk a little bit now to drag on the dramatic experience so that you have to wait longer to see if you didn't watch. Why would you watch? my show before you watch Raw. I mean, I, I don't know, I kind of feel like you have no idea what's going on, but apparently some people do it, and you people are truly the amazing people of this world. Next up, the People Power Posse comes out. Big Johnny, <laughs> <laughs> Big Johnny, Bo Tunga, Office Gang Bang. Ace comes out and announces the Cena Big Show match at No Way Out will be a steel cage match. <laughs> then he shows us the cover of the game that's gonna be bigger than Pac-Man. If what I'm hearing is true and AJ will actually be a character in WWE 13, I promise you I will make a video of myself where I play as AJ for the first two hours that I ever play the game and it won't be creepy at all. So Punk comes out and makes a couple sexual innuendos, names somebody a hosky, and this is what I'm thinking. Do you see how much money I spend on this show? Now I'm pretty sure we all can agree that Punk is living his ultimate dream right now. And next up is Punk versus Daniel Bryan. We all love these matches, so I'm not gonna say too much about them. But that stomp, I've seen it a few times. This isn't the first time I've seen it when it's like this, like here's, here's the, like this. When like, they're like this and they stomp here. When I'm WWE Champion, <laughs> that's, I'm, that's in my contract. That move will not even be done on me. And then AJ came out wearing punk gear. Oh, dang it, Punk and Brian are putting on such a good match, but there is a girl standing outside of the ring who knows who the Vision is. But whenever I do look at the match, I see Punk's elbow 
bent and contorted in some way that makes me gag. I'm sorry. I think it's hilarious when people gag at other people gagging, so I'm sorry if that made you gag, but I'm probably laughing at you. <laughs> Deep Rye hits a massive superplex on Punk for the two count. Not the three count. You can't have three count unless there's a finisher. Brian exposes the turnbuckle. So AJ gets up and tries to tell the ref what Brian's doing, but the ref does exactly what I would do if AJ was up on the ring. Get off of the ring apron. You're not supposed to be here, AJ. Get off of the ring apron. You need to get off of the ring apron. Punk recovers and tries to hit Brian with a splash in the corner. Brian ducks underneath and flips Punk up and Punk's face hits right on the corner of that exposed turnbuckle. Daniel Bryan gets the three counts. Absolutely negating my finisher theory. Kane comes out and attacks Brian with a chair. AJ slides a chair to Punk because Kane's gonna hit Punk with a chair. Punk starts hitting Kane with a chair. Kane rolls out of the ring and Punk throws his chair at Kane who's backing away on the floor away from the chair. Next up we have Christian versus The Miz with Cody Rhodes on commentary. Now I really enjoyed this match and I think part of what made this match really enjoyable was the fact that Rhodes was on commentary. If I was Vince McMahon, I would put more wrestlers on commentary because it's like putting whipped cream on a pumpkin pie. Oh, it's so good. But near the end of the match, Cody Rhodes goes, I don't need to spout about Christian anymore. Threw his headset off. Done. We're expecting an interference, but we don't get one. And in place, we get a switch splash. That's a kill switch followed by a frog splash. I'm just being extra corny tonight. So we cut to backstage and the people power posse are back there. Then Ace is chewing out Botunga and OGB. Ace pretty much lines out Botunga. Explains to him that he is tougher. <laughs> Botunga's all like, but, 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 but the STF will sit on you perfectly. We come back to commercial break and The Miz is still standing in the ring. Now I'm gonna be at Raw on July 16th and I really hope The Miz will be standing in the middle of the ring for a commercial break because I have a chance that I want to get going. So of course The Miz wants stuff from Laurinaitis for basically helping Laurinaitis keep his job. He kept his job? Orton comes out and RKO's The Miz. Like, for no reason. Nothing happened. He just RKO'd him. Ziggler apparently needs permission to not be in a tag team. Next up is Botunga versus Sheamus. This whole match could have been titled, It's Clobbering Time? The only time there wasn't clobbering going on was when Sheamus put the white noise on Botunga. And Sheamus clobbers harder and therefore he wins. Then they show somebody in the crowd, I don't know if it was a boy or a girl or what, that looked like Sheamus and all I know is that I'm gonna have nightmares just because that was scary. I'm sorry, that was really creepy looking. Finally, we come to Funkasaurus versus The Big Show. They start fighting outside of the ring, and Cameron's in the ring, like, crying, like she's watching Melina versus Alicia Fox, and Alicia Fox is beating Melina because Melina is probably Cameron's favorite wrestler, and she doesn't know what to do, so she just stands there in the middle of the ring. Kofi runs out and jumps off the steel chairs to splash The Big Show, but The Big Show catches him and whips him right into R-Truth, who is running up right behind Kofi. And the next few minutes is basically Big Show breaking everything and beating on those three. I've been wondering where Mark Henry has been. I can only think that he got over so well when he turned heel and went hard like Big Show is right now. Hmm, are they trying to recycle a plot? Cole and Lawler are just quiet through this whole debacle. They're just standing there I mean, literally, they're just standing there like, Big Show WMDs Funkasaurus. Big Show grabs the announce table and hits Funkasaurus's back with it. Big Show throws Kofi through the barriers. Big Show throws our truth onto the ropes. So we watch Big Show go up the ramp at the speed of Roseanne after she finishes a buffet. And Johnny Ace comes out to raise Big Show's hand in victory. And some girl had like the loudest orgasm at the sight of Johnny Ace. Is it just me or was the Divas segment so short? I didn't even see it. Huh, I must have blinked. Thank you for tuning in to Unlucky episode number 13 of The Raw Loaf. I really hope you enjoyed the show and if you did, please tweet, please retweet, please put on your Facebooks, please like the Facebook page for The Raw Loaf. Please go ahead and click like down there. Please go ahead and post a comment and I will do better at responding to your comments. Hit that subscribe button up there at the top. Please encourage me to do more without your encouragement. I can't do this anymore and if I sit here 
and do nothing, my life will rot away. And you don't want that, do you? Because I know I sure don't. And by the way, if you're in Vegas on the second weekend of June, there's going to be a tables, ladders, and chairs match put on by Adrenaline Unleashed, and it costs eight bucks to get in. Thank you for your time. And I do apologize for tonight's production value is a little bit lower than normal. If you could even tell, I, I don't even know if I'd be able to. But next week's will be as well. I've been busy, I got finals coming up. I got, I'll be out of town for four days this weekend. I should be back in time to actually film the raw loaf for next week. So you can count on it next week, but it might not be as good because I got a lot of stuff going on. So, but boy howdy, let me tell you what. I got big things in mind. I say that every week. Oops. <laughs>